Welcome guys to today's class. In today's video, we want to discuss an important topic called optical activity. Yes, yes. So we want to understand the concept of it and see how we can solve some problems on it. Like this one we have on the board. So let's start with definition. Optical activity is the rotation of the plane of polarization of linearly polarized light as it travels through a certain material. Let's take it again. Optical activity is the rotation of the plane of polarization of linearly polarized light as it travels through a certain material. You will understand it more as we continue this class. This term, optical activity, can be called optical rotation or rotary polarization. Now, for a molecule, for a substance, for a drug, for anything to be called an optically active substance, it means that it has chiral centers. What do we mean by chiral centers? Let's take an example. One of the molecules or one of the substances that is optically active is what you know, glucose. Yes. Look at this glucose. This glucose can be called D glucose. L glucose. Look at it. D or L glucose. When do we call a glucose D glucose? When do we call a glucose L glucose? Let's see from the structure. Let's check the simplest structure of it. Okay, glucose has six carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. We call it D glucose because of what happened at carbon three here. At if you start from here, you start from here. One, two, three at carbon three. You notice that hydrogen is at the right, while OH is at the left. Looking at it this way, right? Uh -huh. That means this is called D glucose. You call it L glucose if this thing you are seeing here interchange. Are you getting it? If it's interchange so that this goes here and this comes here, you call it what? L glucose. How do we mean? D glucose is called destro rotatory glucose. L glucose is level rotatory glucose. That means when a light, when a plane polarized light, goes through this glucose molecule. This glucose molecule has what it takes to rotate it to the what? Right. That is for D-glucose. It has what it takes to rotate it to the right. We call it D-glucose. But if it rotates it to the left, you call it level glucose. That is L-glucose. You see? Why do we say that it has the tendency to rotate a light ray? Yes. It has a tendency. Let's see how. We we'll talk about chiral centers, that any molecule that has the tendency to rotate right ray, it must have what chiral centers. What do we mean by chiral center? Chiral center is an atom in a molecule. It's an atom in a molecule that is bonded to four different chemical species. When you have an atom in a molecule bonded to four different chemical species, we we'll call that molecule that it has a, it has chiral centers, so to speak. If it has one chiral center, you say it has a chiral center. If it has more than one, you say it has chiral centers. Let's know. Glucose is noted to have four chiral centers. How? At this carbon, at this carbon, this first carbon, because it's an aldehyde group, we start from the aldehyde group. So at this first carbon, we now say how many chemical species bonded to it. This is one, this is two, and this is three. 
So it's bonded by three chemical species. But what we are looking at is four chemical species bonded to an atom in a molecule. And so we say this is not a chiral center. It's not a chiral center. We come here. This is bonded to this. You see the name of the molecule, aldehyde group. This is a molecule hydroxyl group. This is a molecule hydrogen atom. This is a molecule, another name, bonded to what? Carbon, right? That means there are four different chemical species bonded to this carbon. We call here a chiral center for this glucose, right? We check this one. All these are bonded to this. They have their name. This one, they have its name, hydrogen. This one, OH. This one have its own name, and they are different. This is different from this, is different from this, is different from this. And so we say that this one has a chiral center. This is a chiral center too, the second chiral center. We'll come to this. This have its name. This have its name, you get. They are different. This have its name, hydroxyl. This have its name. So four different chemical species bonded to carbon. Third chiral center. This one. All this bond to this, this bond to this, this bond to this, and there are four different chemical species. We say this one also have chiral center. And that is why we say glucose units, whether L or D glucose units, have four chiral centers. Yes, take note. I believe you understand what I just said now. If there is anything you do not understand, please feel free to what? Use the comment box below and what in your view so what we are saying is that glucose has what it takes to rotate light rays yes it has what it takes to rotate light rays either to the left or to the right and that is why we say glucose unit glucose molecule is an optically active molecule or substance yes now it is important to note that there are other molecules other substances that are optically active such as drugs Yes, some of the drugs we have today are optically active. Take note. Proteins, sugars, they are optically active. So have it in your mind as we discuss more on this. Now, if you want to measure how optically active a particular molecule is, there is an instrument that is best used to do that. We call it polarimeter. Polarimeter. This is an instrument that we use so what check how optically active a molecule is a substance is yes so have it in your mind that if you want to check how optically active a molecule is you go and look for polar better we would have discussed more concept of this but because time let's just run down main points we want to talk now optically activity of a molecule or drugs or substance or sugar whatsoever depends on several factors that means if you want to know how optically active a particular molecule is, a particular substance is, there are factors it depends on. One is temperature, two, wavelength, three, part length, and four, the substance being involved. The substance you are analyzing, the nature of the substance, so to speak. Yes. Even the concentration of that substance is also involved. Yes. And so these are the factors that can affect how optically active a particular molecule is. Let's see some formula you need to know when you want to do some calculation on optical activity of a molecule. Let's see. Observe rotation denoted this way, alpha OBS, observe rotation, is equal to specific rotation denoted this way, times length times density for pure liquid. If you are talking about pure liquid, look at the formula. Now, it is important to note that when a sodium D-line is used, when sodium D-line is used, this symbol will be replaced with That means when you see this symbol in your textbook, it means that sodium D line is used. So, have to know this. Okay? Then, observe rotation for solution is equal to T over D if sodium D line is not used. Times length times what? Concentration. 
Note that concentration can be in gram per mil or gram per watt cm cube. Concentration and density can be in gram per mil or gram per cm cube because one mil is equivalent to one cm cube. So whether it's concentration, whether density, look at their unit. The length can be in the m or equivalent to what cm. It can be in dm. It can be in cm. But note that. The best unit used to measure this length is in dm. That means 1 dm is equal to what? 10 cm. Okay? So, there is need for you to know what these parameters mean. This is observed rotation. This is the specific rotation. This is the length and this is the density. This is observed rotation, specific rotation, length and concentration. Yes. So, you have to note this. Now, if you are looking for unit of this, very important. You know, in science, in science, unit of what you just saw is very, very important. And so, this specific rotation can be, or the unit is, from, from observed rotation all over length times concentration or length times density. This observed rotation is measured in degrees. So the unit will be in degrees, right? This length, if it is in dm, you bring it up per dm. This concentration, gram per watt, if it is gram per mil, it means that the mil will come up. Then the gram will have inverse. Or if the length is in centimeter and the concentration is in gram per centimeter cube, you notice that here is centimeter times gram per centimeter cube. This will cancel this, making it centimeter square, right? And so, you'll be having it that degree, this come up per gram, then centimeter square. Yes. Then, if the length is in dm and this is gram per centimeter cube, you'll be having the unit to be degree, this is in dm, per dm then centimeter cube all this depends on what you use this in dm that is why you are using this unit and this is in gram per watt cm cube then this is in degree then this one is when you use l to be in dm and uh, this concentration gram per mil you make sure that the unit goes this way Okay, let's see how to solve this question. A sample of pure S enantiomer of a drug was placed in a 10 cm polarimeter tube. Using the daylight of a sodium lamp, the observed rotation at 20 degrees Celsius, you see why we say temperature is involved, was observed rotation is this degrees. The density of this compound is 0 0.805 gram per mil. What is the specific rotation of the compound? Wow. To solve this, the specific rotation, which is this, is equal to observed rotation given to us is 104 degrees all over the this is the length in 10 cm if i want to use it in, to be in dm i'll just say dm this is equivalent to 1 dm 10 cm is in 1 dm i converted it to dm if i want to leave it as cm i can use it i just put 10 cm times concentration gram per mil that means i will be using I will, I, will, I, will, I will know that the units will now change. I will know that the units will now change to degree. If I'm using this cm and this word, I will know that it is degree per cm, then mil per gram. I will know that this is what it will give me. Yes, yes. And so I want to use it as 1 dm. I will now say, 1 dm is that 10 cm you see there. 1 dm times what? 0 0.805 gram per mil. This will be giving me 104 over 0 0.805. If you press it in your calculator, 104, this time this is 0 0.805. If you press it in your calculator, it will be giving you 129 point. 129.19 The unit 
degree, then per dm, then per gram, then mil. Therefore, we said the answer is 129.19 degree per dm, because I converted to dm, then per gram, then mil. That means I am following this unit. So that is the answer to that question. Thanks for watching today's video. Please feel free to share this video to your friends, to your classmates. Wish you success to your exams.